In this video, I will show you six rotary tool bits that you can make at home and that is actually useful. First off, we have the flap sander. This one makes sanding go by so much quicker and I use them for my wood carvings all the time. To make the flap sander, we need some sandpaper with some cloth backing. I'm going to use one of these sanding discs from my bench sander. But the best sandpaper to use is one inch emery cloth sandpaper, which you can get on Amazon. I will leave a link to that in the description below. Then we cut three one inch squares out of the sandpaper and make a small hole in the middle of them with a center punch or a nail. I like to make the squares progressively smaller as we get towards the top. So I cut up a little bit of material from the edges of the top two squares. We attach the sandpaper to the 402 mandrel, which is included in most Dremel kits when you buy it. Tighten the screw well and that's it. This flap sander works great for cleaning up your wood carvings after you are finished with a rough carving. It removes those deep scratch marks very efficiently and is so much faster than sanding by hand. And if you want an even smoother surface, you can just make some new ones with some finer grit. Next up, we have a mixer that you can make from steel wire. This can be used to mix liquids. The steel wire from coat hangers are perfect for this bit. They are stiff but thin enough to fit into the collet of a rotary tool. Get some pliers and cut off a straight 4 inch piece of wire from the coat hanger. Then we bend a half inch 90 degree angle at the end of the wire to make it into an L shape. We grind down the sharp edges for safety. And then we find the right size collet to secure the wire in the truck of our Dremel. In this case, I had to use the multi truck to make it fit. And now the mixer is ready. Before we start the Dremel, I have to warn you that you should not use a wire that is too long or use a high RPM. Then this can happen to the wire and it happens quickly. I recommend keeping it at the lowest RPM. And we always want to use eye protection or a face shield when using a Dremel, especially when we are experimenting with homemade bits like this. And don't use this with any kind of toxic or unhealthy liquids. You know, mistakes happen and we don't want to be spraying, for example, acetone all around us. Now I just set up the bit in the flex shaft to get the liquid away from the motor. Now we can insert the stirrer into the liquid, set the Dremel to the lowest RPM and start stirring. I think this one works great, but it's worth mentioning that the fast RPMs of a Dremel might cause some bubbles. The sanding disc is great for removing rust, sanding in tight spaces and cleaning surfaces. Luckily, these are some of the easiest bits to make for your rotary tool. With just some sandpaper and a 402 mandrel, you will never run out of sanding this. You can also make them in different sizes and grits. Take some sandpaper with the preferred grit. I like to use a rough grit because it removes material quicker. Use a marking compass to draw a circle on the back side of the sandpaper. Make sure to make a hole in the center with a needle. Cut out a sanding disc with some scissors and mount it to the 402 mandrel. These larger sanding discs are great for removing material from bigger surfaces. But these sanding discs have a tendency to break at the center because of the size. So to avoid it from breaking, we can use two washers from the sanding drum and attach one on each side of the sandpaper. The larger sanding discs are also great for getting into tight corners. Use a low RPM when starting and stopping the Dremel with these larger discs, up to 15,000 RPMs. If you turn off the tool with a high RPM, this might happen. And if you make the sanding discs too large, then they will become very unstable and shaky. We can also easily turn the rotary tool into something that looks like a mini lathe. This works great for making stuff like beads and rings. To make this, we need a small drill bit, an allen key that is a little bit smaller than the drill bit, some sandpaper in different grits and a hammer. First off, we need to make the allen key straight. I'm using the EC456 cutting disc to cut it, but you can also use a hacksaw or whatever you got for cutting metal. Then I'm going to drill a hole in the center of what I want to make. In this case, I'm going to make a wooden bead. When the hole is ready, you can hammer in the cut allen key. Find a collet that fits the allen key and attach it to your rotary tool. I'm going to use the multi chuck. Now we can start shaping the bead. Start the Dremel at a low RPM when doing the rough shaping. Pass it across the rough sandpaper to shape it. Once the bead is the shape that we want it, we can increase the RPMs and move on to the finer grits to make a smooth surface. And here is the finished bead. 
You can also use this method to make rings with a rotary tool, but it is only going to work for the outside of the ring. Next up, we are going to make a Velcro pad sander with a bottle cap. Since we have the bottle cap as support, you can use them a little bit more aggressively than the sanding disc. To make the pad sanders, we need to drill a 2mm hole in the center of the bottle cap. Then we cut a small piece of the velcro and a small piece of the sandpaper that we want to use. I use a compass passer to make three equally sized circles. You can also just trace the bottle cap. Then I cut out all the circles with a scissor. We find the center of the velcro pad that we will attach to the bottle cap. Then we hit a nail through it from both sides. And then we push a screwdriver through it to make the hole bigger. Remove some of the protruding material, this is to give us access to the screw. Now we can put the velcro onto our bottle cap, but make sure that the centers align. Attach the 402 mandrel and tighten it well. Then we attach the sanding disc onto the other velcro pad and that's it. Now we have our homemade velcro pad sander. These work great for cleaning up surfaces. As I said, they have a little bit more backing, so you can actually apply some pressure when sanding. In my experience, I've found that you should keep it at an angle when sanding. It seems more efficient that way. The velcro will slide a little bit from time to time, so the sanding disc will come off center. But just stop the tool and recenter it if this happens. This happens less if you run the tool at a lower RPM. A good RPM is 10,000 to 15,000 RPM. This is by far the most effective bit that I've tried for removing stuff like paint and cleaning up larger surfaces with a rotary tool. 